Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to welcome everybody to the Walt Disney Company's third quarter 2022 earnings call. Joining me for today's call are Bob Chapik, Disney's Chief Executive Officer, and Christine McCarthy, Senior Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer. We had an excellent quarter powered by world-class storytelling, outstanding performance at our domestic theme parks, increases in live sports viewership across our linear channels and ESPN+, and significant subscriber growth at our streaming services, which added 15.5 million subscriptions in the quarter, including 14.4 million Disney Plus subscribers, of which 6 million were core Disney Plus and 8 million were Hotstar. As of the close of Q3, we now have 221 million total subscriptions across our streaming offerings. And when it comes to our key franchise content, I could not be more proud of the teams at Disney, Pixar, Marvel, and Star Wars. The hugely successful Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness has earned nearly $1 billion at the global box office. And Thor, Love and Thunder, which premiered on July 8th, has grossed over $700 million at the global box office and is the highest domestic grossing film of the Thor franchise. Speaking of Disney+, Plus, which is now available in 155 markets after recently launching in 53 new territories, we release content with appeal across demographic groups, including Obi-Wan Kenobi and Ms. Marvel, as well as feature films like Disney's Chippendale, Rescue Rangers, and Disney Nature's Polar Bear. Looking ahead, Q4 will feature a fantastic Disney Plus content slate with a steady flow of key releases, including Marvel's She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, Lucasfilm's Andor, and Disney's Hocus Pocus 2. And we look forward to celebrating the second annual Disney Plus Day on September 8th with activations across our Synergy machine. Finally, given the result of our recently completed upfront, it is clear that our unmatched portfolio continues to be highly sought after by advertisers. Combined with our deep expertise in ad tech, we are in a position of strength with record upfront advertiser commitments leading into the launch of our ad-supported Disney Plus tier. The Disney Plus ad tier goes live on December 8th. All of our theme parks are now open and we continue to bring back more of the great experiences guests love. We continue to see strong revenue and profit growth at our domestic parks and experience businesses, even as our cruise ships and international visitation have yet to fully recover. Domestic demand at our theme parks continues to be strong. At the same time, the business model transformations we have achieved over the past few years have driven substantial increases in per capita spending 
and give us the flexibility to adapt should economic conditions change. We celebrated three major milestones for our parks and experience business this quarter, each of which were priorities I set when I had the opportunity to lead our parks team. First, the innovative and immersive new roller coaster, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Second, we expanded the Disney Cruise Line fleet with the Disney Wish, which sailed its maiden voyage on July 14th. And finally, Disneyland Paris opened Avengers Campus on July 20th, completing the first phase of our ambitious expansion plan. At Parks Experiences and Products, third quarter revenues increased by more than $3 billion and operating income increased by $1.8 billion versus the prior year, reflecting improvements across both domestic and international parks and experiences. Demand at our domestic parks continues to exceed expectations and our continued focus on improving the guest experience through the use of our reservation system to purposefully manage capacity versus simply increasing volume has the added benefit of improving yield and optimizing overall economics. Per capita spending at our domestic parks also remains strong, increasing 10% versus Q3 of fiscal 2021 and over 40% versus fiscal 2019. And in another sign of the robust demand we have seen at our parks and resorts, occupancy at our domestic hotels in the third quarter was 90%. Looking ahead, domestic demand at our theme parks continues to look robust, with current forward-looking hotel bookings and intent to visit roughly in line with pre-pandemic trends. At the media and entertainment distribution segment, third quarter revenues increased by over $1.4 billion versus the prior year, and operating income decreased by $645 million as an increase at linear networks was more than offset by declines at direct-to-consumer and content sales, licensing, and other. Linear networks operating income in the quarter increased 13% to approximately $2.5 billion, driven primarily by growth at our domestic channels. The increase at domestic channels reflects double-digit percentage operating income growth at both cable and broadcasting. Growth at cable was largely driven by higher advertising revenue and to a lesser extent, a decrease in marketing costs and an increase in affiliate revenue. Advertising revenue at cable benefited from the timing of the NBA Finals, which represented six of the top seven telecasts among the coveted P18 to 49 demo across all networks this quarter. This timing impact, in addition to the benefit of adding the NHL to our portfolio and strong pricing from the continued strength of live sports, drove ESPN advertising revenue growth of nearly 40% year over year. Demand for live sports remains strong. Moving on to broadcasting, operating income increased versus the prior year due to higher results at both ABC and our owned television stations. Total domestic affiliate revenue increased by 2% in the quarter. This was driven by six points of growth from higher rates, partially offset by a three-point decrease from fewer subscribers. At direct-to-consumer, lower operating results across Disney+, Plus, Hulu, and ESPN+, Plus reflect increased programming and production costs. At Disney+, Plus, we cross the 150 million subscriber milestone and ended the third quarter with more than 152 million global paid subscribers, a net addition of more than 14 million subs versus Q2. Disney Plus core net subscriber additions of 6 million reflect growth in existing markets as well as launches in over 50 new markets during the quarter. And we currently expect Disney Plus core net additions in the fourth quarter to accelerate modestly versus Q3, particularly in the domestic market. Hulu added more than 600,000 subs during the quarter and ended the third quarter with 46.2 million paid subscribers and ESPN Plus ended Q3 with 22.8 million paid subscribers, a net increase of about a half a million versus Q2. 
At content sales, licensing and other, operating results decreased in line with our expectations by about $160 million versus the prior year quarter, reflecting an unfavorable foreign exchange impact and lower TV SVOD and home entertainment distribution results. As we continue to scale back on third-party content licensing, we believe content sales, licensing, and other results will continue to face headwinds and expect fourth quarter operating results will decrease versus the prior year by close to $100 million. Cash content spend across the company is now expected to total approximately $30 billion for fiscal 2022. And we expect annual cash content spend over the next couple of years to be roughly in the low $30 billion range as well. We are also revising our full year forecast for capital expenditures to $5 billion compared to fiscal 2021 CapEx of $3.6 billion. Finally, before we move to Q&A, I want to spend some time sharing a few updates on our fiscal 2024 guidance for Disney+. Plus. We are providing more detail on subscriber targets by separating our guidance into two categories, for Disney+, Plus and Disney Plus Hotstar. Our core Disney Plus subscriber target range is 135 million to 165 million by the end of fiscal 2024, largely consistent with previously provided guidance that non-Hotstar Disney Plus subscribers in 2024 would approximate 60 to 70 percent of the expected 230 to 260 million total subscriber base. We are, however, updating subscriber guidance for Disney Plus Hotstar to up to 80 million subscribers by the end of fiscal 2024. As you may know, we recently made the disciplined decision to not proceed with the Indian Premier League digital rights and will evaluate these rights with that same discipline. As we sit here today, we remain confident that Disney Plus will achieve profitability in fiscal 2024 and look forward to several upcoming catalysts, including reaching a steady state of tentpole original content releases, delivery of premium general entertainment and international local originals, and the upcoming launch of our ad-supported tier alongside the new pricing structure announced earlier today.
Please like, subscribe, and comment on the video. May the Force be with you. Impressive. Impressive. The most impressive.